All right. Hey, footbag friends. Welcome to the first vlog of the fanzine. I'm shooting this partially in celebration of Alan fixing the YouTube links on Modified. Honestly, that guy just does so much for the community and for that website. So little thanks. But you know, it means a lot to a lot of us. Uh, I know that writing in my blog, and I guess hopefully with this vlog eventually, uh, helps me kind of gather my thoughts and sort of settles me down. Uh, do want to give a shout out to Danny Boyle and Adam Greenwood for inspiring me to, to do a vlog. Uh, hopefully this is somewhat entertaining. Um, I'd like this to be kind of a mix of shred highlights from a session and just general thoughts and updates about what's going on. Uh, so you may have noticed in the run I just did, we're in these green G units. You might be able to tell from the shred that they're freshly modded. It's only my second session with them. Um, you know, they're a hard commodity to come by these days, uh, even on eBay, just finding my size. And even if you do get a brand new pair, like this was about a year ago, they're 10 year old shoes. There's really no guarantee that they're gonna hold up. I like to think I'm a pretty experienced shoe modder, but uh, again, when you're cutting a piece of leather that's been manufactured over 10 years ago, you can't be surprised when, you know, you're cutting it in a way that the manufacturer never intended. But like this instep on my dominant clipper, on the left clipper, literally from the first day I modded it, it ripped open and I could never get it back on. Now, I didn't go to any tournaments last year, so it didn't really slow me down too much. I was able to hit some good new tricks and whatnot. But, uh, you know, if I go to Worlds this year, I don't want something like this to get progressively worse and hold me back in competition. So I figured it was time to mod my last pair of shoes. I think I got these on Christmas of 2009, and I just never liked the color, so they've been sitting in my closet ever since. Uh, they still feel really stiff. I feel like when I try and do tricks with a lot of dexterities in them, they just kind of feel chunky. but that's sort of been the case for every pair of G units I've ever owned. The, the first couple sessions, it takes a while to, I don't know, I guess break them in, get used to them. The good news is they do feel like they're holding up pretty well. Uh, the initial cuts and everything, I didn't lose the instep like I did with my other pair. Uh, I'm probably talking a lot, so let's take a quick break and uh, here is my favorite drill from today. The other big piece of equipment news for me is uh, I mentioned in my last blog entry that I won the Link of the Day contest that Kevin Hogan hosted. Uh, it took a while for me to get my bags and I started to get a little pissy about it, which is weird because I haven't really had opportunity to play lately. Uh, but man, when the bags did arrive, it kind of blew my mind. Um, they're caribou foot bags from Carol Christofferson. Uh, I didn't really know much about the bags. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but I was sort of just expecting a single stitched bag, just, you know, in a little envelope or something like that. Uh, so I was sort of surprised when the package came, it was big. And I opened it up and uh, it came in this. How, how schmancy is this? So he has like an actual handmade wooden box with the logo of Caribou on it. You can see that. And uh, when I slid it open, I was kind of surprised to find there was not one but two foot bags in there. Uh, one of them is an Amaretta one. I think this is going to be the choice one. And the other one's kind of a more experimental bag of ultra suede and some other stuff. Kind of funky pattern there. Um, I might end up using this as a warm up bag and then this as a primary down the line. Uh, though I think they still need a little bit more breaking in. Uh, it was funny too. Uh, I think he made them kind of heavier. I don't know why, uh, but that's good because I actually prefer heavy bags. And he had a nice long note in there, which I was also 
very surprised to find where he actually describes the bag making process and all this other stuff. Very, very sweet and professional. I was very impressed by it. Um, but in that note, he mentions, I've included extra filler for you. And I checked the envelope and I didn't see any, which is when I was putting the bags in and out of the box, I found, how schmancy is that? It's got a little stash in there with extra fill. So I think that was pretty cool. Um, thank you again, Kevin, for hosting the link of the day. And thank you, Carol, for the, the bags. They look really amazing. Um, yeah, so I look forward to, to breaking those guys in. I'm gonna take another quick break. So the other uh, topic that's been on my mind lately has been world championships. Uh, I didn't go last year. I missed it a couple years ago when I got married as well. Um, but I really want to go this year. And I really wasn't sure if logistically it would be possible because my son was just born six weeks ago. And uh, we're still really not sleeping through the night. It's been pretty challenging. Um, I'm hoping that in the next few months it'll be easier. The, taking care of the child will be easier uh, but there's no guarantee of that and it's tough because if I wait a couple months to see if we get the hang of the parenthood thing I'm sure it'll be too expensive to get to worlds and make those arrangements and prepare and train on the flip side of it I'd also hate to buy my tickets now and then blink and it's August all of a sudden I haven't had time to prepare and then it's, I've just dropped all this money and vacation on a trip where I really have no chance of doing well. And, and I would want to do well. I feel the whole point of going to Worlds for me is try and close out my 20th anniversary with a good performance, ideally make finals and hopefully go dropless or just do a routine I'm proud of in finals because I've never really done that before. Um, hopefully I can make a decision in the next week or so. Uh, but yeah, again, we'll see. The final topic I wanted to touch on was Evan visiting in early January, which was pretty cool. It really kind of struck me because I wouldn't have been able to see him if Rippin hadn't stepped up and driven all the way from Fort Collins to the airport to get Evan. Kind of struck me how much passion those guys have that, you know, somebody who just won Worlds, obviously the fire is going to burn pretty bright. But somebody like Rippin, who has been in the sport so long, you know, can't remember the last year he competed at Worlds, probably 04 maybe, 03 probably. But he still cares that much about footbag that he'd be willing to take that long drive, get Evan from the airport. And again, I don't think that session happens if he doesn't do that. Uh, because I'm just, you know, I was waiting for my son to be born, so I didn't think I could pull that off. Um, but yeah, it just makes me feel proud to be in a community where people care so much about the sport, especially when there's no tangible rewards in it or anything. All right, well, hey, thanks for listening to my first vlog. On uh, that note, I'm going to end with a corgi. Yeah. <laughs>